Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're looking at some really um, fascinating developments in the search for an HIV cure. Yes, yeah, specifically some new findings from the big CROI 2025 conference. Exactly. We're going to focus on two new cases, individuals who might have achieved, you know, long-term HIV remission after getting stem cell transplants. And this is uh, really significant news, especially for you, our listeners, of Hello and welcome to HIDR NA Test Guide Podcast. Right. You're already engaged, staying informed. And with, you know, over 4,500 testing labs across the U.S. available, this kind of deep dive offers a glimpse into where the research is heading. It really could shape future treatments. So our goal today is simple. Understand the buzz around these two people, the Chicago patient and the Oslo patient. What do their stories tell us about a functional cure? Is it getting closer? Yeah. What makes these cases stand out? We'll try to break it down and keep it clear. The key thing is they both had cancer, got stem cell transplants, and then saw sustained HIV remission for a time. And that's why it's causing such a stir. Definitely. So maybe let's start with the basics. Stem cells, what are they exactly? So stem cells are uh, essentially the foundation. Think of them as master cells, all your different blood cells. They originate from these stem cells. Like the building blocks. Exactly. And bone marrow is packed with them. Okay. And the challenge with HIV, as many listeners know, is that it's sneaky. It weaves its own genetic code right into our cells. Mm -hmm. Into the host DNA. Creating this uh, persistent viral reservoir, like sleeper cells the virus hides in. That's a perfect description. And even our best drugs, the antiretroviral therapy or RT, they suppress the virus incredibly well, but they can't completely clear out that reservoir. Right. Which leads to the difference between types of cures people talk about. Yes, that's crucial. We talk about a functional cure, which is really remission, keeping the virus undetectable without needing RT. That's what these cases seem to represent. Okay, so undetectable without daily meds. Right, versus a sterilizing cure, mm -hmm. which would mean totally eliminating every last trace of the virus from the body. That's the ultimate, much harder goal. Got it. Now, this idea of stem cells and HIV cure isn't entirely new, is it? The Berlin patient comes to mind. Absolutely. Timothy Ray Brown, his case, gosh, it really opened the door to this whole possibility. He was the first person known to be functionally cured. Yeah, leukemia, right? AML. Acute myeloid leukemia, yes. And the key thing was his stem cell donor had a very specific genetic mutation. Two copies of it, actually. Ah, the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation. Let's unpack that a bit. Yeah. Why is that specific mutation so important for HIV? Okay, so CCR5 is a protein, a receptor, on the surface of immune cells, the CD4 cells HIV likes to infect. Like a docking station. Exactly like a docking station, or maybe a co-docking station. Most HIV strains need to use CCR5 to get inside the cell. Think of it like a specific keyhole. Okay. The Delta 32 mutation basically changes that keyhole uh, or removes it. So the virus's key doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And if you have two copies of this mutation, one from each parent, your cells lack that functional CCR5 doorway. Mm. Makes them highly resistant to HIV infection. So Timothy Ray Brown got cells from someone naturally resistant to HIV mm -hmm. and he had two transplants. Yes, two transplants from that donor. Plus, he went through really intensive chemotherapy and radiation beforehand, wiped out his own immune system, the cancerous one. Tough stuff. Very tough. And he also developed something called graft-versus-host disease, GVHD, where the donor cells attack the recipient's body. Wow. But despite all that. Despite all that, the amazing thing was after he stopped his RT, his HIV viral load just stayed gone. Undetectable. For how long? For over 13 years, until he sadly passed away from a recurrence of his leukemia in 2020 but he remained free of rebounding HIV. An incredible story, and there have been others since then following a similar path. Yes, a small handful. The London patient, Dusseldorf, City of Hope, a French patient, all received transplants from donors with that same double CCR5 Delta 32 mutation. And they also achieve remission off our- That's right. It really seemed to cement the idea that this specific mutation in the donor cells was, well, the critical factor. But science is never quite that simple, is it? Have there been cases that challenge that idea? Well, yes. More recently, we've seen some fascinating variations, like the New York patient used a mix of cord blood with the mutation and adult stem cells without it, and the Geneva patient who got a transplant from a donor without any copies of the mutation, just the standard wild-type CCR5. No mutation at all, and achieved remission. Appeared to, yes. And there's also the next Berlin patient who received cells from a donor with only one copy of the mutation, still achieved long-term remission. So it gets more complex. Which really sets the stage for these two new cases from CROI 2025, the Chicago patient 
and the Oslo patient. Let's dig into the Chicago case first. Okay, so the Chicago patient, he's a 67-year-old man living with HIV for about 14 years, then diagnosed with AML. Like Timothy Ray Brown. Like Brown, yes. But his pre-transplant treatment, the conditioning therapy, was reduced intensity. A bit gentler, aiming to lower the risks. Okay. And his donor? His donor did have the double CCR5 Delta 32 mutation. Unrelated donor. And how did things look initially after the transplant? Pretty good. About a year later, tests showed undetectable HIV RNA and DNA. His HIV antibody levels were dropping. Things looked promising. So they stopped his RT. They did, around 15 months post-transplant. But then came a setback. Oh. Yeah, about two months after stopping RT, his viral load rebounded. Came back up to nearly 800 copies. Ah, that must have been disappointing. So he went back on RT? He did, yes. Yeah. Restarted Bictarvi. But here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. Even though the virus came back, they did more tests. And they found that the HIV RNA and DNA were still undetectable in the donor-derived blood cells. The new cells? The ones with the CCR5 mutation. So the new immune system was still protected. The rebound came from somewhere else. That's what it strongly suggested. Yeah. Likely from that old pre-transplant reservoir. The new cells were holding the line, basically. Okay, that's a crucial finding. But the really remarkable part is what happened next, right? This is the kicker. After being back on ART for almost two years, he decided, with his doctors, to try stopping RT again. A second try. A second try. And the latest news from CROI, he's now been in remission off ART for 10 months. Wow. After rebounding, that's unheard of, isn't it? It's the first known case of sustained remission after a rebound following one of these transplants. It kind of flips the script. What does that tell us then? Well, it suggests that an early rebound doesn't automatically mean failure the body, or perhaps the new immune system, might still achieve control eventually. It highlights just how stubborn that reservoir is, yeah. but also how powerful the protection from those CCR5 mutated cells can be. Like Dr. Rubenstein, who presented it, said it shows how hard reservoir eradication is, but also how effective these cells are long term, even if the virus pops up briefly. Fascinating, really challenges previous assumptions. Okay, what about the Oslo patient? What's his story? So the Oslo patient, 58 years old, also living with HIV for 14 years. He developed myelodysplastic syndrome, which can lead to AML. Now he himself actually had one copy of the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation naturally. Oh, interesting. And his transplant came from his brother who had the double mutation. A sibling donor with the ideal mutation. And how did his treatment go? Any unique aspects? Well, he developed quite severe and prolonged graft versus host disease, the GVHD. Ah, that complication again. Yes and he needed a lot of immunosuppressive treatment for it, including a drug called ruxolitinib, which interestingly, the Geneva patient, the one without the mutation donor, also received. Hmm, another potential factor maybe. Possibly, and importantly, tests showed the donor cells completely took over his immune system, full replacement. And the outcome regarding his HIV? Also very positive. His viral load stayed undetectable, so he stopped RE two years after the transplant. And, and now he's been off ART for two years, so four years post-transplant, and still undetectable. That's great news. Any other signs? Yeah, researchers looked deeper. They found very weak or absent HIV-specific T-cell responses, and his antibody levels were fading. It suggests there isn't much or any virus left to keep the immune system activated against HIV. So the immune system isn't seeing HIV anymore? Seems that way. They did find tiny traces of HIV DNA in gut tissue samples. The reservoir again? Kind of like old footprints. Mm. But crucially, they found no intact HIV DNA, the kind that can actually make new virus, and no replication competent virus in his blood or gut. So echoes of the past, but no active threat found. That seems to be the picture. So his case adds another really strong piece of evidence supporting remission after these transplants, especially with the double CCR5 mutation involved. Okay, so two very compelling, though different stories of remission, but we need to ground this, right? What are the broader implications for our listeners? Absolutely, perspective is key here. These stem cell transplants are uh, still very serious medical interventions. High risk, high cost. Exactly. They're primarily treatments for life-threatening cancers like AML or other severe blood disorders. They're definitely not a standard treatment option for HIV itself right now. Not something you'd do just for HIV. No. The risks far outweigh the benefits for someone otherwise healthy on effective RT. But, and this is the important but, Yes. these cases, each one, they provide invaluable clues. They're like windows into how remission could be achieved. 
scientists are using this information to develop strategies that are safer and could be used much more widely. Learning from the exceptions to find a rule that works for everyone. Precisely. Researchers are comparing these cases, why did this person achieve remission and not another? They're looking at everything. The CCR5 status, how intense the chemo was, did they get GVHD, how bad was it, how big was their viral reservoir to begin with? It sounds like a complex puzzle with many pieces. It is. And as Dr. Trasse noted about the Geneva patient, while CCR5 is important, there's also growing focus on just shrinking that viral reservoir itself, regardless of the CCR5 pathway. So attacking the problem from multiple angles. Exactly. And that includes completely different approaches too, like gene modification. Ah, uh, yes, using tools like CRISPR. Right. Instead of finding a rare donor with a mutation, can we engineer a person's own cells to be resistant? There was some early work presented at CRY on this too. Tell us about that. Dr. Henrik's group looked at people with HIV who needed autologous stem cell transplants for lymphoma, meaning they got their own stem cells back after treatment. Okay, using their own cells is a big advantage, less risk of rejection or GVHD. A huge advantage. So before giving the cells back, the researchers used a tool, a lentivirus vector, to insert three different genes designed to provide HIV resistance into those stem cells. One of them targeted CCR5. So modifying the patient's own cells to fight HIV, how did that go? Early results showed the modified cells and grafted, well, they stuck around long-term. And in one person who later stopped ART under supervision. Yes. The modified cells seemed to offer about 75% protection against infection. Now he did eventually have a viral rebound and needed to restart ART. So not a complete cure yet, but significant protection. Exactly. Partial protection, showing the concept has potential. It's proof of principle. Still very early days, of course. Right. And again, tied to needing a transplant for cancer currently. But it points towards a future where maybe gene therapy could offer a functional cure without needing a donor, right? That's the hope. It's another promising avenue being explored. All these different lines of research, learning from the transplant cases, developing gene therapies, they're all part of this bigger effort. We're slowly building the knowledge needed for more broadly applicable functional cures. That's really encouraging to hear. So let's try and summarize the key takeaways for everyone listening today after this deep dive. Okay. First, definitely exciting news about the Chicago and Oslo patients potentially joining the small group of people in HIV remission after stem cell transplants. Second, remember these are complex, risky procedures used for cancer, but they offer absolutely vital clues for achieving long-term HIV remission more broadly. Third, the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation is clearly important in many cases, but we're learning it might not be the only factor. Things like reducing the reservoir, maybe GVHD, immunosuppression, they might all play roles we're st still figuring out. Right, the picture is getting more detailed. And finally, other research paths like gene modification of a person's own stem cells are showing early promise. That could be a pathway to more accessible cures down the road, though it's still early days. Absolutely. The bottom line is the scientific community is pushing hard on many fronts, learning from every case, aiming for solutions that can help everyone living with HIV. Okay, so here's a final thought to leave you with. Thinking about all these different approaches, the transplant insights, the gene editing, what does this gradual progress suggest to you about the future? Where do you think the most promise lies for developing a widely available functional cure? It's something to ponder. Keep following the research from reliable sources like AIDSMAP. Keep track of updates from conferences like CROI. And of course, remember that resources like Hello and Welcome to HIVR NA Test Guide podcast and that network of over 4,500 testing labs across the country are here to help you stay informed and proactive about your health. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.